The cable TV industry is losing subscribers. People are cutting the cord. What does that mean for a company like Lionsgate and what you do? Well, look, we sell everywhere. Broadcast, cable, streaming, you know, yet to be named platforms that are going to be announced imminently. So, you know, the cable clients have been amazing for us and, and we, of course, own a couple of cable networks, premium channel and stars. We co-own with CBS Pop, a basic cable network. So how do you deal with uh, diminishing subscribers in the entire ecosystem? You have to have better shows. You've got to have hits that people can't live without. And as a seller, just on the show side, you sell to everyone and you sell to the places that have the most needs, which is really where you want to focus and sell to new clients as well. We have shows all over the streaming universe. We have two big network pilots right now. Uh, hopefully, you know, moving toward a pickup in the next couple of weeks. And some, you know, legacy and fantastic cable partners that we continue to supply. And we want to supply them as much as we can. I mentioned Netflix and I mentioned Orange is the New Black. Of yeah. course, that's a, a huge hit for them and a huge hit for you guys. Yeah. They're your partner, but they're also your competitor because they also go and create their own shows from other that's, providers. That, that is true, that, but that happens at every, every broadcaster is all, a client and also a competitor because they either own or co-own a lot of their own material. In so how, how has your relationship changed though? Has it gotten more thorny? I mean, are the negotiations tougher? No, I mean, it is, you know, fantastic partners. We have six different series on Netflix in the original space. They're a huge client for our film library, both through, you know, years ago, the Epics deal and then just the open market. And we're in there pitching originals to them constantly. You know, as many shows as they're making, uh, they're a very discriminating buyer. Uh, it seems like they're doing everything, but that's only because they're being pitched thousands of things from which they're picking dozens. Uh, and not every show is exactly right for them. There's you know, plenty of shows that they might be interested in that for us make sense on another platform. It's partially about the show, it's about the economics, it's about the creative team. Where do we think the show will thrive? So that's what we spend a lot of time thinking. So Netflix is a partner. And you know we're excited that they're growing, and we also believe we can be competitive in the same ecosphere. So Netflix obviously collects a lot of data on your programs. Uh, who watches what, when, by how much, where? How much of that do they share with you? Uh, very little. <laughs> uh, I mean, on the original side, they really keep that information to themselves. You'll know by the, the, the measure and the depth of the marketing campaigns on any given season of Orange is the New Black or Dear White People or the Joel McHale show, who they're going for uh, and who it's appealing to. So obviously Orange is the New Black is a strong female show and it's continued to grow. I can't tell you specifically, but I know it's a hugely important part of their lineup right. and important to us and that's why we've had so much success with it. And if a show does isn't performing, they kind of let you know pretty quickly. Not that different than traditional networks. Fair enough, fair except enough. Except that Nielsen is out there publishing their, their ratings, and they're not so much on the Netflix. Right, and Netflix has its own data to go off on. Yeah. Netflix and Amazon are big spenders, we know, for content. But they aim for controlling global rights instead of a market-by-market -market approach. So how does that complicate things for you? What challenges does well, it create? Well, look, we're in the rights aggregation and accumulation business as a studio. That's what studios do. And the idea that you have a long-running show that you can monetize many, many years after its initial cycle. So it's a little bit of calculus when you're looking at a show, the various bidders that might be interested, where will it be on the air for the longest amount of time, and what are the ultimate economics. And some shows make more sense to do with streamers than others. A, you know, a widely commercial broadcast hit, like a Law & Order, let's just say, which has a cable syndication window, broadcast syndication window, international and streaming, that kind of show that has so much revenue on top of the initial window is probably not the right show to necessarily sell to Netflix if you have a, a broadcast buyer. Uh -huh. Something that might be more niche, more specific, more narrow, it maybe won't get the big international and maybe no domestic syndication, could be perfect for them. So you have to kind of evaluate that when you have the bids. By the way, if there's only one buyer, right. you go to one place. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, and look, Netflix knows it's competing with everybody. They're pretty aggressive on things they want. They don't get them all. Lord of the Rings was highly competitive around town. It went to Amazon. Mm -hmm. So they know they're not going to get all of them either. 
Kevin, final question to you before we wrap things up. Um, obviously, Lionsgate has a lot of content. What is the non-Lionsgate TV show that you're watching that you're uh, most excited about? Well, I'm a big fan of Peaky Blinders, which is a, a fantastic BBC series that uh, Netflix has in the U.S. Uh, kind of obsessed with it. And, you know, I, I, I love watching great shows. I'm jealous that, you know, it's not ours. And they're inspirational because the bar is really high. Mm -hmm. And we have to look at our own material and say, you know, can we reach that level, which we try to do every time out of the gate.